It's the Beatles from the beginning to the end. It's their solo careers. It's their humor. It's their incredible music. It's the British invasion. It's their American adversaries. It's an historical musical education. It's the Beatles and a whole lot more. A Beatles fan's paradise. It's Beatlesarama.com. Tune in. You'll love it. Welcome to Tomorrow Never Knows with me, Bob Wilson, and Sir Warren Brown of the Beatles Kingdom. Today we have a special show, an anniversary, a celebration. We have a special bon vivant guest and a good friend of his who's a mystery guest. Today we celebrate Mr. Ken Michaels. This is your life, Ken, and welcome to our show. But first, we must say hello to our sponsor, Lovely Rita. Beatles Magazine is a publication with 370 plus million visitors in all their pages, read by thousands of fans around the world every day. Beatles News is updated daily, 24 hours, audio, video, photos, interviews, contests, Jiminy Crickets, additional materials, and more. Follow Beatles Magazine, the most complete online coverage, 24 hours a day. And how many days are there in a Beatle week, you guys? Eight, Eight days, days a week. A lot of it. Hello, Are you there with a special question? Uh, yeah. Um, today I want to ask uh, a little trivia question. That's all to start the show uh, to you and Ken. Um, it's fairly easy one, so I think you guys can get it right, but you never know. Uh, would you might know who might be celebrating a very special occasion today? Is it A, Ivor Davis, B, Kit O'Toole, or C, Ken Michaels? I would guess the, the one thing special about today is being on the show. I don't know if you're counting that. So um, with Kit, well, every day is a special day with her. But I would think um, I'm going to go with Ivor Davis. And you, Bob? Well, Ivor is a really good guy. He's a fun guy. He's got all those great books. And he traveled with the Beatles. But today, if it's really special, I'm going to have to go with Ken Michaels. Ah, correct. There you go. C is the answer. Ken Michaels. Welcome, Ken. <laughs> Thanks for having me on, guys. Uh, it's you're always welcome. great to be with the two of you. 
that was a dead start to the show. So I'll let Bob take it over and brighten <laughs> brighten it up a little bit for you. Well, call me Johnny Sunshine. But you know what time it is. It's time to say hello to our mystery guest. It's a mystery guest. Hey, mystery guest. This is Ken Michaels' life on this show. You're an important part of it. Can you talk a little talk for us and say something so Ken might guess who you could be? Hey, Ken, you might know me from the person uh, who doesn't like Magneto and Titanium Man, but the person <laughs> who also loves Press to Play. Do you know who I could possibly be? Well, anyone who doesn't like Magneto and Titanium Man is not sane, uh, as far as I'm concerned. But uh, I would guess it has to be, could it be Kid O'Toole? You would be correct, sir. Oh, well, there she is. A pretty face added to the show. Hello, Kit. Hello, Kit. Hello, hello, everybody. Hello, Ken. I just had to stop by to say congratulations. This is, I mean, 2,000 broadcasts. I mean, that is just amazing. You know, I, I just cannot believe, uh, you know, you've had such a, a great career. I mean, you know, going back, I don't mean to stress how <laughs> long and long it is, but I mean, really, I mean, you've, you've been in, in the game for so long. And, uh, you know, and I was thinking about it, that not only, you know, have you been in the game so long, but you've really been a, a mentor to me and and others who have, you know, come along, you know, a little bit later in in, mm. uh, in the field. I mean, I was thinking that, you know, um, you really encouraged me to get into podcasting. You know, you asked me to be a part of Talk More Talk. Uh, we did that panel together, um, and I think it was the first New York Beetle Fest I think I ever attended. I think it may have been, uh, I think it was the Westchester Fest. I think we got okay. uh, yeah, I think that was the first one I ever attended. And so, you know, we did that panel together on Overlook Solo Songs. And um, and uh, you had me on Things We Said Today, you know, the, the, the previous version of it uh, yeah. many times. And, uh, you know, you really encouraged me to get involved in all of this. And, and you know, so I wanted to, to thank you for that, too. So you really not only have... Uh, you know, done all of this and it, you know, had your own career, but you've encouraged other people and mentored other people to get involved in, in the career too. So I just wanted to thank you for that and say that you should be commended for that too, for, for you know, just bringing up other people in mm. the Beatle world. So, well, so congratulations very, and thank you for yeah. that. That's very sweet of you to say. I think I'm very fortunate because I have so many different Beatles shows. That's kind of how I got to 2000. It really mm -hmm. helped to have more than just one. And on the one hand, where every little thing has been my baby since 1982, and it's really, you know, more of an old fashioned radio music show. I'm also fortunate to have the two different podcasts that I do. Because there's nothing that I like more when it comes to talking about the Beatles than with people who actually take the time and really know the music. And in, in this particular case, the solo music would talk more talk, you know. So, um, you know, it's not all about my uh, enforcing my opinions on people. It's more sharing opinions and respecting people with different opinions. And as long as people really take the time to listen to the music, then I really enjoy talking to those people. And between both my podcasts, I really am really just lucky to, to be working with the co-host that I have. So, um, you know, you add it all together all these years. And because I have so many different shows going on simultaneously, that helps to get to 2000. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, absolutely. And, you know, and you really have helped bring in a, a diversity of voices. And I think that is so important. And, you know, diversity of opinions, diversity of generations. And, you know, and I think your your shows and, and the you know opinions you've expressed and, and encouraged, um, you know, has really meant a great deal to me and to a lot of other people. So, you know, congratulations. And I am honored to 
be co-hosting Talk More Talk with you. Well, it's a joy working with you, Kit. And I mean oh, that. You. you make everything so much easier. Oh, <laughs> Thank you, Ken. I really appreciate that. So, uh, so yeah, this is really a you know, and I and I wish you two thousand and and one and more <laughs> great many Beatles more. broadcasts. Okay. Many more. Yeah, I've I, I've been told uh, you know here's to another two thousand. I don't know if that's realistic. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know I, I, I'd have to live to be a hundred at this point, and I have uh, to keep doing as many guy. shows. Oh, yep. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> and many, many more. Your eyesight's going, Warren. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kit, that was a very sweet message. I appreciate that, and I'm sure Ken appreciates it also. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. So, all right. All right, guys. So I know you have a great night of trivia playing. Like, so. You can't, you got to stay there right now. You can't go anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you guys have a big night of trivia. If you go, I will be so mad. You stay right there because you have a thing no, 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 you no, can't this miss is, it. No, this is Ken's. This is Ken's night, and we are Ken, coming you back. Ruin something for Ken no. if you try to stay safe and leave and, right now because and something's Ken. happening. We have another mystery guest, and they want to say hello to you guys. So yeah. if you another roll, mystery guest. very, very insulted. Oh my gosh, another okay. mystery guest? Another mystery guest. And Warren, I'm sending you the mystery guest phone number right now on your cell phone. Oh. And you call him up and put him on. Oh, wow. Man. He wanted to say hello to you guys and wish Ken a happy 2000 show. Okay. Wow. Okay. Boy, Ken, this is this is your life. And this, uh, yeah, Ken, this uh, this is a surprise to me too. So um, <laughs> it is, it is. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm dialing now, Bob. Wow. Oh. Okay. Well, now. And now you have I'm to guess curious. who it is. I think Kit will know right away. I well, may have an idea, but I'm not sure. Oh, you're not. I wouldn't put you on the hot seat if I didn't think you'd guess it. <laughs> All right. Uh, great, you know, great. if if Paul's too busy, I can call him later. Oh. <laughs> don't guess my second, don't guess my third mystery guess. You gotta really <laughs> All right, now I'm calling a Madden now. This guest is so cool that Paul had to wait for him to be done before we might decide to have him on. Wow. Oh, okay. So we got a special guest here. Oh my Hello, God. mystery guest number two. Are you there? Yeah, hello there. Yes, Ivor Davis. Yeah. Don't say who it, oh, he told us already. The new mystery guest is Ivor Davis. Welcome, Ivor. Say hello to Dr. Kit O'Toole and the man of the day, the man of the hour, the man of the last few decades, Beatles, Ken Michaels. Wow, what a pleasure. What a pleasure to say hello to Ken and to my the lovely Kit. Hi, Kit. Are you, Hi. Is, that, is that really you? Of course, of course it is. <laughs> it's a low what a, what a what a pleasant surprise. What a great oh. surprise. Well, I mean, I, yeah, mean, I must say, yeah, I'm, I'm delighted to be talking to you both, particularly Kit, because I haven't seen her for for too long. No kidding. <laughs> no kidding. It has been too long since I've heard your wonderful voice. <laughs> Thank well, you. Thank Welcome, you. Ivor. Yes, this is a surprise to me, too, and a very good one. And, and this show's all about Ken, not about us. So please uh, say hi to Ken. Give him a well, kiss I, on I, the I, cheek I, I must, for me. I must say, first, <laughs> first of all, it's great to talk to you all. And uh, hello, Ken. I know, I mean, Ken has been going with his expertise on the Beatles for nearly 40 years. Yeah, I, I mean, right. I, I think I was, I think I was a teenager at the time, but, uh, but he, kn he knows his You're stuff, child. and I'm, I'm delighted, you know, there's so much stuff that he knows that, that, that you know, uh, that, that the world needs to know, and uh, he's another, another Beatles expert, and I must tell you that whenever I go to any of the Beatles events, when I, when I meet Ken and Kit and people, people like Ken, I mean, I think, I think it's terrific. It's like an extended family we never knew existed. It really is. 
I know agree. that's one of the joys of going to the fest. There are people that you yeah. only get to see during the year at that time, unfortunately, because we all have busy lives. But, you know, we're all connected because of this passion and love that we have for these four guys that have given us joy for so long. So, uh, right. yeah. I mean, Ken, you know, I must tell you that, that it is astonishing that, I mean, I had covered the Beatles many years ago in 1964 when they went on their first tour with them. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, and then I kind of forgot about them for a while. And it was a bit like finding you all like, uh, like, like long, long lost relatives. It's, it's kind of weird. And here we are 50 plus years later talking about, you know, who. <laughs> it's, it's it's really true though Ivor yeah I mean really that that this one you know this one band uh you know really united all of us in in such a special way and and that as Ken said this shared passion brought us together and uh and, and it is like at these fests it's like a family reunion every year yeah, not only that. I mean, I'm I'm also concerned. Of how are your parents doing, kid? You know, so oh. I mean, <laughs> how's your they're, mom and dad? You know, yeah, they're sorry doing. To, sorry to go off. Yeah, they're doing great. Uh, and uh, mom's doing much better. And uh, and yeah, they're doing great. Thank you so much for asking. We come on sure. back to Clarendon Hills and visit us. Thank you. Well, listen, um, Ken, a pleasure to talk to you. And it's Same so here. much fun. Just as if if we had more time, I'm sure we'd have more stories. But but I know that this is your you're under the spotlight right now. So I'm going to get off and and let you get on with your knowledge and expertise and and entertain entertain both the lads, Bob and Warren and uh, and Kit. And it's not one of the lads, but one of the lasses. Anyway, <laughs> lovely to, lovely to meet you all again. Say I Thank you, Ivor. Ivor. Yeah. Are yeah. you there? I'm here. Who is this? Is it who this I is think Bob. it is? This is your old chum, Bob. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. W with a very good accent, actually. I, I, you, you, you sound... I'm trying it out. Like Do you know Ivor? why I'm trying it out, Ivor? Because you're a very sexy man. And <laughs> when you go to the Beatles conventions, I hear the ladies buzz around your table while my table is empty except for Sir Warren. <laughs> and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to. Kit was telling me that the accent attracts the ladies like a magnet. It so now I'm going to drive everyone crazy, you see. It's true. Trying to talk like you to maybe get two women to buzz around my table. You know, you know <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, I mean, here's a secret that I'm going to break to you all. I was actually reared in Alabama. <laughs> I, 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 yeah. Uh -huh. Birmingham, Alabama. But as a, as a child, I was sold and, and uh, sold to a, a couple in England, and that's how I ended up with an English accent. Enough of this foolishness. Good night and have a, have a great weekend. I say, Tom, don't go yet. Tell us something. The last book you published, what is it and where can it be found there, mate? Okay, well, the last book I published, and this is my English accent, I'm a Cockney, was, uh, try to talk about, like me. Get a Queen's accent. Try to try to talk like I do. Dumb it down. Try to sound like a Ramon. I can do. I can do a Scottish accent. You see, I'm a Scot Scottish accent. I can say, "Oh, my last book. Was called, my last book was called Manson Exposed: Fifty Year Journey into Murder and Mayhem." And oh, never mind. That's my Scottish accent. Or I can do an Australian I'm accent. Doing voiceover work. Yeah. So this is getting. This is getting completely out of control. Good night. <laughs> That's how you know what show you're on, buddy. Bye-bye. <laughs> Great to Bye. hear you, Ivor. Thank you, Ivor. Right, all, all the best, kid. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you. You're a sport. Hey, Warren. Bye. And Bye. kid, don't you dare shut that thing off. You stay there. Um, Warren. Bulldog's growling at us, so we better listen. <laughs> Do you have your cell phone handy there, Warren? I have my cell phone handy, yes. I kept it under wraps, but we have a second. No, actually, what is it? We're up to the fourth. I can't count my abacus in my closet. We yes. have another guest who wants to come on and wish happy 2000 show. Wow. So let's just like type the right number so I don't get another person in that area code who doesn't know who we are. 
And please call them up right now, will you please? Do you want me to call them on Skype, correct? To come on the show, yes. Uh, okay. They're gonna they're gonna fet Ken and wish him a happy two thousand show. You got it. And it's another mystery guest. This is like the Sergeant Pepper cover we're filling up. Okay. <laughs> I'm I'm I back with like a bungee cord. Okay. This is Ken. No, I'm leaving. <laughs> Ken, oh. it's poor Ken. You have to be here. You're his. You're his. Like, you know, you're his buddy, his pal, his protege. You're the talk more talk guys. You got to be here. All right. All and we right. love to talk more talk. We oh. wish you even more talk. Boy, okay. Ivor, Ivor is such a sweetheart. He really, he's a great guy. He's a sexy, what sexy. A man. Yeah, that was that was not who I expected. So <laughs> that was. <laughs> I'm dialing now, and this is also a surprise to me, so don't kill me, Ken. Yep. Why is this feeling like this is your life? <laughs> it is. It is. I'm yep. pulling by. Yep. You usually it do this like when someone's life. career is over. You know? yep. right. Hello. Uh, oh, I hear a voice. Who might that be? Hello, mystery guest. Don't identify yourself yet. That would give the secret away right away. We can ask you any questions. Mystery, mystery guest, are you an author? Yes, I am. That means I get another question. So you're an author. Do you write yes, about I... the Beatles? Yes, I do. <laughs> hmm. Do you hail from Philadelphia? But you spent yeah. time over in the Nordic nations from which my ancestors hail. Were you ever I, in the Sweden area? Yes, I was. <laughs> Do you hang out with a couple of other people who are authors, mystery guests, who wrote other books about the Beatles? Do you call yourself the Beatle Babes? Yes, we do. <laughs> Let's see if Kit has a question. I hand off to Kit because she's very smart. The doctor. I'm stumped. Can, can I get? Can I give us a guess? Are you Sally Kirkland? She's even. Oh well, I Sally got a big. I got a big Kirkland. quiet out of that. Ev <laughs> evidently, nobody knows who Sally Kirkland is. <laughs> no, I know who she is. All right. There you go. I was waiting to get some kind of laugh. But Arthur, you know. I have a question that's not a yes or a no. What's right. the name of your book that's about the Beatles? The name of my book that's about the Beatles is Diary of a Beatle Maniac. Diary of a Beatle Maniac, you say, from a fan's perspective. There's only one person I know who's a journalist who hails from Philadelphia, <laughs> went over to do a journalism career in another language. Boy, are you brainwaves. You and Kit should have a contest and put me to shame. And, and you have a book, Diary of a Beatle Maniac. Would you be Patricia Gallo Stenman? That's true. That's who I am. Yay. Well, Yay. At, least, at least today. Yay. Yay. Thank you for being on the show. And what an well, intro. <laughs> oh that was... my goodness! Oh, that yes, and it's it's just you know a crazy time, isn't it? With with all this, but yeah, that's who I am, and uh, thank you for inviting me. That was right. Nice. If you want to thank Ken for all his entertainment, yes. he's like yes. the Johnny Carson. He's been on. Yes. He's got his. I don't mm -hmm. think Johnny Carson even had two thousand shows. Thousand. Well, I, Each I, one yeah, with a I, different perspective. He even had that Ringo Starr cat on there on that show. <laughs> so do you want to uh, like yep. Yep. give I would Ken like his to kudos say. and ask him some questions? Yeah, happy 2000 broadcast to Ken Michael. Yay, Hello, Patricia. Yay. I'm quite honored. I don't have any music. Oh, well, I wish I had some music to, to, to follow that up, but I don't. So. <laughs> <laughs> How I was your book it. doing? When did it first come out? I'm sorry. How was your book doing? And and when did it first oh, come out? Tell us about Diary it, of a Beetle Maniac. Yeah, it it's been out about a year and a half now. Uh, it came out uh, 
on John Lennon's birthday on in 2018. Okay. Wow, yeah. I can't yeah. believe it's been that long. My gosh, yeah. yeah. I, I, that's probably when I met you uh, at that's, the fest. My God, it was that long ago. Wow, time flies. Yeah. Isn't that funny? I mean, time flies, doesn't it? My sure God. it does. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yep. It's, it's a lot of fun it. at the fest when you have all the authors oh. on the panel all together. Oh, it's great fun. The panels are so much fun. And, you know, sometimes they're, they're you know, they're less than an hour. You wish they could go on for like three hours because we all have so much to say and we don't want to shut up. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They seem to go Am by. Right? About, yeah. Yeah. They seem to go by in like five minutes. That's the truth. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's well, fun. The panels are a lot of fun. Yeah. Well, it would be a great idea. And now, you know, with technology being so improved and what happened at the last fest with all the, the, uh, the panels on zoom, and a lot of, yeah. uh, you know, performances on Zoom, you could take all those panels and you could leave it online. That would be great, yeah. you know, after the mm -hmm. fest. Yeah. They, it, they really should yeah. consider doing something like that. So, yeah, yeah, I agree. It would be good. And and some people also miss them. It would be great so they could, you know, they could uh, listen to them when they want to. You know, that's a good idea. So. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. Just when you're there, there's too many things to do all at the same time. So you can't get right. to to every panel so no. yeah i all really right. wish all the, the panels of the past were archived you know yeah i agree yeah all um, right patricia you have uh met ken in person you yeah. talked oh, to him yeah. um you have any kind of fond or funny memories you have of ken i like his smile uh, <laughs> <laughs> then i'll keep it on <laughs> you got the greatest smile in the world. <laughs> and, and and also, I I always look forward to when he's there because he's so informative. You know, we have a lot of fun, and I'm I'm so missing missing the fest this year. You know, it's yeah. just been kind of like not a good feeling when you can't go this year. You know, so but uh, yeah. Um, yeah, it's 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 really there's a void there, definitely. You know, and yeah. um, you're so used to going every single year. And like I right. said, it's it's for so many people, it's the only time when we all can get together. And there's people from all over the country, sometimes in other countries. And, sure. you know, we all share that that connection together. And mm -hmm. uh, of course, you know, it's another thing in recent years when you're friends with a lot of these people on Facebook, you see their faces. But now you're finally, you know, hanging out with them. You know, at the right. fest, and that's a great feeling too. Yes, it is. It, it well, is. you know, Patricia Gallo Steinman with three names because you're so cool. They gave you three. You know what I <laughs> want to ask Ken Michaels? Ken Michaels, what has been your favorite, most rewarding moment with all the shows you've done? Does one jump out at you that was the most special? Why was it special, and what happened? Wow, I wasn't prepared for that question. <laughs> this is a spontaneous Ken Michaels celebration show. Uh, well, um, I did my show, which became Every Little Thing, for 10 years on WDHA uh, in New Jersey. And one particular show, I did a Beatles BBC A to Z show. And it was all the songs that the Beatles recorded for BBC that mm. they hadn't released yet. Live at the BBC hadn't been released. So it's 36 songs, and I did them all alphabetically. And at that time, I had various bootlegs, and they were all in different formats. I had some of them on vinyl. I had some on reel-to-reel. -reel. Oh, wow. <laughs> I, had, I had some songs <laughs> on cassette. And just to be able to coordinate all those songs together to have it run smoothly was not easy. You know, I'm sure I probably had some songs on CD at that point, but um, my show was three hours long and I did so many interesting thematic sets. But that's one that really jumps at me that I don't have to think about because I was running around the room trying to make sure that everything ran smoothly, you know, because, you know, you got a turntable, a cassette player, a real thrill machine, the other part of the room with a remote. But you want to make sure everything was queued up just right in time. A lot of those songs are short, you know, so. You know, that's one that that I remember very well. But I also mm -hmm. love doing um, 
for four years, the Lost Lennon Tapes radio series ran before my show. So I actually did a lot of thematic uh, ideas built around the Lost Lennon Tapes, like an alternate Imagine album or an alternate Mind Ooh. Games album. And just do different takes of each song as they appeared on, on the albums. Mm -hmm. So you know, later on, there were bootlegs that came out that were just that. But I was doing that on the radio back then. Um, it was a lot of fun. They gave me a lot of creative freedom at that radio station. So, so many very bizarre, strange ideas <laughs> were on that show between the themes and all the games that I've had, the trivia and all the games. Well, Kid O'Toole, you've been on the, uh, on the airwaves with this rascal. <laughs> when uh, you came on the show, you've done a whole bunch of great shows with him on Talk More Talk that air every Monday. Tell us about where fans can find Talk More Talk so they can, if they haven't been fortunate enough to be watching all along, well, how can they tune into the next Monday's broadcast? Sure. We, well, you can watch us live um, every other Monday on our Facebook page. Uh, and you can just look talk, uh, look up Talk More Talk, a solo Beatles video cast. And uh, you can watch us uh, every other Monday at 9 p.m. Eastern. And we have a great time because, because we do it live people can interact with us you know we they can uh, leave comments and we respond to as many as we can while we're uh, broadcasting we can't get to them all because it's there's just mm. you know much as we would love to go on <laughs> for hours and hours uh you know we just can't do that so uh but we huh. read them all uh after the show and uh and we comment on them and then if you can't watch us live no problem, because you can either watch uh, the, the show is archived on the, the Facebook page. You can also uh, find us on our YouTube channel. All the shows are uploaded there. Uh, just look us up there. Um, and the audio version of it is on virtually any um, uh, podcasting platform you can think of. iHeartRadio, iTunes, Google Play, um, you name it. Uh, Podbean, all those places. So just go to your preferred uh, podcasting platform, uh, put in Talk More Talk, uh, Solo Beatles video cast, and you'll find us. And uh, we we have a blast doing that show. It's it's really fun. We and we cover all different topics, mainly Solo Beatles related. But of course, we we occasionally, you know, let's just say when the Let It Be box set comes out, mm. we'll cover it. <laughs> you know. Now, you you with this, with this, uh, all these shows, is there a show that stands out where you said Ken Michaels really shines? We all shine on this one. He's really shining on. What episode might that be? Gosh, I mean, there's so many. I mean, I'm trying to think. I mean, Ken, is there one in particular that you like has been a favorite of yours so far? Well, first of all, we do all shine on. Yes, indeed. Uh, and, and <laughs> Good answer. Show. But um, I was asked this question before, and I, I just because I like the topic, um, we did a show on Mythbusters, mm -hmm. which is all about things uh -huh. that you hear about that are either not true or not corroborated. Yeah. And certainly in this world of the Internet, there's so much false information that's out there that gets spread like wildfire. Oh. You we get spread a lot of, of it on our show. <laughs> <laughs> See, that, that's why I like you guys. You give me work to do. <laughs> Thank I you. Get to correct what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. That's what we count on. Look, that's guys. Uh, that was Look, a lot guys. of fun. We could do a follow up on that too. Yeah. yeah, we should actually. There's probably more we could we could do. Yeah, you know, my favorite shows that we do are what we call another listen shows, uh, where we take an album that uh, was really panned when it first came out, um, and you know, misunderstood by critics. You know, were panned by critics, didn't sell well, and we go back and listen to it and say, you know, was it that bad? And you know, one of them we did was ring go the fourth and mm -hmm. i thought you know we really uh did a great discussion of that and and you know ken and i talked about it uh, you know a couple of years ago well that that actually that panel i mentioned uh, just a little while ago at um the first new york fest i ever attended i think one of your picks for underrated songs was drowning in the sea of love uh -huh. and so yeah and so yeah and so it was really great to revisit that album and after that show 
you know, we got great response and a lot of people saying, you know, maybe I need to go back and listen to that album. Maybe it wasn't as bad as I remembered. And, you know, so, so it was great. I mean, I'm not saying you have to, you know, love that album, but it was really great to, to see, you know, wow, maybe our show, you know, opened some minds um, that, you know, and so, yeah, the shows like that, I, I really enjoy. And it really made me think of that, that panel that, that we were on all those years ago and, and, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, just show how open-minded you are about, uh, about those, uh, you know, the different albums. Right. Uh -huh. Well, there's, well, Kit, well, Kit um, I really love uh, Talk More Talk. And Ken, I believe you're a very big part of that and probably the star on Talk More Talk. You guys um, have great information. Uh, you know what you're talking about. And Ken, I believe uh, you have met Ringo Starr, haven't you? Yes, I've interviewed him three times. Uh -huh. amongst the, the biggest highlights of my career, definitely. But right. um, I love to talk to him about his songwriting, which is something that most people don't even approach him about. You know, right. they think of him as, as a Beatle and as mm -hmm. a drummer. And usually almost every interview with Ringo is about the Beatles and the new album and nothing in between. Right. So um, usually I try to talk to him about the different collaborations of uh, the songwriting that he's done because a lot of people aren't aware of the fact that ever since his album Vertical Man, mm -hmm. he's actually co-written just uh. about every song on his albums. Mm -hmm. And he's not known for being a songwriter, and I would never put him in the same category as John, Paul, and George, but I think that he's made a lot of effort as a songwriter, and so many of those songs are quite good. And certainly in the 70s, he wrote a lot of songs with Vinnie Poncia. There are those few songs with George Harrison that they collaborated on together, like Photograph and it don't come easy and back off Boogaloo. But now, anytime he puts out an album, you can pretty much bet that almost every single song is a co-write. Right. So I wish that he would get more credit for that. Mm -hmm. And um, he's worked with a lot of different artists out there of mm. different styles, you know, mm -hmm. going from Van Dyke Parks to Richard Marks to Dave Stewart. You right. know, there's a lot of different people. I used to there. walk my dog in Van Dyke Park. <laughs> well, there, there should be a Van Dyke Park. Yeah, there should be. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Warren Brown, I heard your phone chime. Did a phone number come up? Did someone just text you a phone number? Yes, it sure did. <laughs> Could you dial it for us, Warren Brown? I can sure do that. <laughs> okay. And let's see. Wow, boy, Ken, this this is this is your life. <laughs> While we're waiting for the call, why don't you give it? Tell us about your other show that also goes on when you're not doing the big hit TV program that the kids love so much. Talk more talk. What about this other show? Well, there's two. There's every little thing which is a syndicated radio show, which airs right now on 40 radio stations. And that show is pretty much what I've been doing since 1982. That was my start in radio. It's a mixture yeah. of Beatle and solo Beatle music and pretty much anything Beatle related. Cover versions of Beatle songs, family members, uh, side projects of the Beatles. Those are songs that they wrote, performed on, or produced for other artists. Uh, tribute songs, novelty records, anything related to the Beatles can be heard in that show. Um, you know, as a syndicated show, it's a one hour program. So every single show has a, a thematic set that's usually something unique, like John's political songs, songs with Eric Clapton being featured on it, um, songs that start with the word don't. You know, it could be anything. <laughs> you know, it doesn't matter. It ranges from, from silly to serious. You know, yeah. it's just to get people thinking mm -hmm. what would fit into that set. And um, and every show or almost every show has an interview in it. And um, the syndicated show also features Beatles trivia to play along with as a bonus feature. So um, if anyone's interested in listening to that show, um, there is a page on my website, KenMichaelsRadio.com, for every little thing. It lists all the radio stations that run it. And if you scroll down to the bottom of the page, it lists it by day of the week when they run it. You click on the link to the radio station and um, you could stream it on each one. 
So there's that show, and then there's Things We Said Today, which is my other talk show podcast, which I do with Alan Cozen and Darren DeVivo, uh, two very knowledgeable people on the Beatles. And Darren has had a long history in radio in New York on WFUV since 1983. Alan Cozen uh, has been writing for Beatle Fan Magazine for a long time. He worked for the New York Times in their classical department. He's a real classical expert. And he's written a few Beatle books, too like from the cavern to the rooftop and got that something how the Beatles, I want to hold your hand changed everything. And, um, our show, we can talk about anything group or solo. Uh, whereas talk more talk is almost entirely solo, but, um, it could be about the history, specific albums, uh, both shows, by the way, talk more talk and things we said today feature news and, um, things we said today, just like talk more talk is bi-weekly. Right now, it seems to be we're alternating with each show every week. So, um, you know, we did Talk More Talk this week. We'll do Things We Said Today next week. Things We Said Today is heard on Podbean. Also, the audio of that is on um, iTunes and on YouTube. It's not as widespread as Talk More Talk. And by the way, um, Kit is such a joy to work with. Part of the reason is because... She does all the back work. <laughs> Everything <laughs> that has to be done with that show. She places it everywhere. She's the reason why it's on Podbean, iTunes, YouTube, Spotify, iHeartRadio, everywhere. And, you know, everywhere. She does all that work, you know? So, uh, We're here, there, and everywhere. That's right. Yeah, hey, Roy, that's Brown, right. Did you dial that other phone number? Yes, and I believe they're on the call right now. <laughs> and I love it. Hello, mystery guest. Don't tell us who you are yet, okay? Okay. Are you there? Hello, yes. mystery guest. Hi. Let me ask you some questions so we can see if they can guess maybe who you are. <laughs> Is your name Nicole, Nicole Michael? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome uh, to the show, Nicole. Thank you for coming on. <laughs> Hello, Nicole. Hi, how are you? Hi, I'm Nicole. doing fine. Hi, Nicole. <laughs> Hi, you brought me out from behind the scenes so that you can be on the forefront now instead of bugging everybody else. Do you have anything you'd like to say to Ken Michaels? Yes, I want to say congratulations on your 2000th broadcast. That's awesome. And thank I'd you. like to say thank you for all you've done to help out all of my clients and me when I needed it <laughs> over the years. You've just been really awesome. Oh, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure working with you. I got to ask you one question, Nicole. Yeah. You're so good on a daily basis of posting something on Facebook. If it's something like National Watermelon Day, somehow, <laughs> somehow in your archives, you have a photo of the Beatles with a watermelon. It doesn't matter what it is. You have a picture for everything. So what, how do you, you do all so this? Right. You are so right. You are so right. How do you do it, Nicole? I, I, honestly, just a lot of, too much time spent on Google image search. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but thank you for noticing. <laughs> every, time, every time you do that, I keep saying, how does she do that? She's got something yeah, for everything. I, whenever I see so, even an interesting photo, I've never seen it before. I save it, and then I'll have it ready when I do need it for, you know, Watermelon Day or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so, you yeah, Beatles, thank you. The Beatles must have so, known this was going to happen in the future, you know, that they'd have to pose for everything, you know. <laughs> true. I, I don't know. <laughs> but thank you for all the great work you do, Nicole. Oh, yes. Thank you. I appreciate it. Mm. And congratulations, so Nicole, Ken. What? Thank you. Go ahead, Bob. Give him a big congratulations. I didn't mean to step in like an oaf and break off your congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> tell us a little bit about what you've been doing lately and tell us about your company. Um, well, as probably all of you on the phone know, I manage <laughs> 910 Public Relations. Um, we just do a lot of uh, publicity and outreach for authors, artists, musicians, uh, DJs, radio personalities, um, somehow related in the Beatles world. So, um, which is, Kit is one of ours. Yes, and indeed. Ken, 
Yep, and she's awesome. And Ken Michaels has been a great friend of our company forever, and um, he's one of our go-to people to do great interviews. So. Well, I love all the clients that you represent, and I always need new interviews. And the one thing you can always say about the Beatles is there's always a new book coming. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> it never ends. Very, Very true. Yeah. We, yeah. We are always busy. <laughs> all right. You know, Nicole, please. just to mention some of these other illustrious clients that you have on there for us, will you please? Sure. Um, yeah, off the top of my head, I, I know I'm going to miss somebody, but um, Jude Sutherland Kessler, Ken Womack, um, Jerry Hammock, um, Sean Gaylord, Aaron Kadovich. Um, there's a whole <laughs> whole host, and I know I'm just probably forgetting people right now. Um, I think we. Book? Where can they find you on the net to find out all these great authors and all these great books? Where can they go to find you? Sure, they can go to 910PR, as in PaulRingo.com, um, or on Facebook, just 910 Public Relations, uh, Facebook.com slash 910PR. Well, you know, you're a sport coming on because I didn't give you a lot of time, but you were very enthusiastic and you wanted to say hello and you wanted to say congratulations. So we want to thank you so much for being a sport and helping us make Ken celebration a little bit brighter and thanks for all the people you've sent our way on the shows you're really nice and you've always been so helpful oh thank you so much thanks for thinking of me and i'm happy to be a part of the celebration thank and now you, i have Nicole. to be just a little bit cheesy can i have ken womack's new book <laughs> oh, boy. oh boy don't go there bob i had i had him on the show and he, he i know he's busy he's been He's in, a, you know, he's in a much higher ethereal league than I am, but I'm dying to read that book. And he can come on and talk about yeah, it again if I can have a copy. He can come on anyway, yeah, even if actually, I can't have a copy. Yeah, we actually don't have the review copies yet, but because um, we're no, working with the UK. One. I wanted to read but, the last one about Abbey Road in the studios. This is really cheap. That I can really get you. Good. That one I will get you. I think. <laughs> Very much. And if he signs it to Bob Wilson, my favorite Beatle host ever and ever, and that'll be good. <laughs> Obviously. Yeah. Next okay. week, Michael, I think we have 60 something shows and he has 2,000. So I'll come in third after him. Well, him, it'll be him, and, him and Kid in a tie, then Warren, then me. So that's the way it goes. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, Nicole, I would ask the same thing, but I know Ken's not going to th uh, sign a book and send it my way. Wait uh, till I get I, mine, I, and then you can do this. I've, I've oh, asked wait. him. Wait till I've the postman rings my bell with my book, and then you can pull this stunt there, partner. Uh, this is an inside joke there, Nicole. That's <laughs> Uh, I thank you, Nicole, and and I'm glad uh, I get to speak with you uh, for once. Yeah. Wow. That's true. And, and very nice meeting you. You got a sweet voice, and I'll hand it back over to Bulldog. Okay, Warren. <laughs> might ask some... well, thank, thank you, thank you, Nicole. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you, Nicole. I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye. 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 We were going to do some trivia, but we didn't get to that yet. So I hope Ken's trivia isn't too hard. That's why I made Kit's day, too, because I can like lean on her expertise. We can hide my ignorance. But Warren Brown, do you still have your phone handy? I sure have. I sure do, Bob. We have a guest now. If all goes well with the wonders of technology, I'm sending a number over. And if you call this person, I bet every. Everybody is going to know who she is. It's another mystery guest celebrating the 2000th broadcast of the great Ken Michaels. So who else is coming on? Kit, do you want to do a plug for Coca-Cola? Maybe they'll, they'll give us a uh, <laughs> Coke over. That sounded terrible. When I say send some Coke over, I mean the yeah. soda. <laughs> Oh, oh boy, Bob. Come on. No now. tooting and snore. I just want some ice in a glass. Tooting and snore. <laughs> the worst uh, bootlegs ever. I remember 
hearing about it, and I'm like, wow, John, Paul, and Stevie Wonder, this is going to be awesome. <laughs> like, and I heard it. Stevie Wonder passed out on the floor. I mean, I couldn't <laughs> believe. I, I, I mean, I was so excited when I heard about it, and then I heard the actual recording, and I thought, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> kind of boring. Look, really kid, boring. Kid, kid, you've done a book on Stevie Wonder. Oh, wait, wait a minute. That was wait Michael, a second. That was, that was <laughs> Michael like J. <laughs> I'd like to do one on Stevie that, Wonder. Seriously, I would and, love to do one. And that I, was know. Michael Jackson. Was is that Michael correct? Michael Jackson. That and, was correct. But yeah. I would seriously, I would love to do one on on Stevie Wonder yeah. in the future. Right. That would that would be on on my list. I would and, love to do one. And, and where can people find that book at? Uh, uh, Michael Jackson, you can find yeah. it on Amazon. That's probably the easiest way to find it. Uh, just uh, go to Amazon and uh, and just enter Michael Jackson FAQ. And you, uh, you can got find it. it right there. Hey, and I think you have a neat Beatles book, too, that I really like. Yes, what? you can also find it on Amazon. Also uh, easy to find. Songs we're Tell singing. Us the title. You don't have it to hold up. We'll have to superimpose it. Yeah, there you go. Uh, songs we were singing, guided tours to the Beatles, lesser known tracks. Um, and uh, you can find that easily on Amazon as well. Can so. we do a flaming pie show someday? Uh, yeah. How about when the box set comes out? Yeah. Yeah, awesome. Good That's one deal, of my man. favorite albums. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's right. The box set's coming out. Uh, right. Uh, that's well. That's the next archive release. So I don't know. Is there any word on when? Has anybody heard anything? The date that's been given for quite a while now is July twenty fourth, and okay. I haven't heard. I haven't heard if it's delayed because mm -hmm. of COVID nineteen or not. But so far, that's the date that we're going by. Okay. So uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm looking forward to that. That's definitely among my favorite McCartney albums. That'll be like, good. I, yeah, I love it too. Warren, yep. did you dial that number? Uh, you didn't send it to me. So I sent it to somebody. Somebody just got a random phone number. <laughs> now play the Jeopardy music. <laughs> 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 Who is this? Okay. You really should be on a game show. Okay, yeah. well, I was. So I lost. It was Jeopardy. I had negative money. <laughs> <laughs> Who we admire much and they're wonderful and dear to our hearts, but the suspense is killing me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. They're, oh, they're on. Oh, they're on. Hello, Hi. mystery guest. Is that you, mystery guest? Hello. Ah. Hello, mystery guest. Don't give your name uh -huh. up just yet. How are you tonight? I am doing wonderful. How are you guys? We're wonderful because we're celebrating the 2000th broadcast of Ken Michaels with his peer... A person who's unmatched in her Beatles writing and knowledge, a big fan at all the conventions, Kid O'Toole. So we have oh, Ken on I... here and Kid on here, mystery guest, but don't give yourself away yet. <laughs> I'm going to ask some questions and see if we can discern who you are. Do you write books about the Beatles? Well, yes, about the Beatles, one of the Beatles more specifically. Like Dorothy Kilgallen would say, you seem to have hesitated in that question. Is there a little more to it? Do you write about, hmm, let's say, one of the Beatles in particular? Yes, I do. And I guarantee you that the venerable and very learned Dr. Kid O'Toole already knows who I am. Don't give it away. Don't I think it. everybody <laughs> does. And I don't. <laughs> because, because we're friends and she knows my voice. Yes, I You're do. You're killing my bit. It doesn't <laughs> take much to put them out of their misery. Now, who, can, who can mistake that voice? Yes. Are your books so heavy that when we read them, we can't put them down till we suffer carpal, They're what is it, so carpal tunnel syndrome? <laughs> Let me see one more question. Can I ask one more question? Sure. Shana -na, na na Hey, Jude Kessler. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Okay, so now tell me, this is the 2000th show of Ken Michaels. And, and Kent, what are you celebrating? Oh, we're, I'm, I'm here to celebrate Ken. 
Oh, that 2,000 shows, can you even imagine doing that? I cannot. <laughs> that is incredible. That is so incredible. Is, is Ken on the line? I'm right here. Hi, Jim. Congratulations. Congratulations, Ken. That is an unbelievable accomplishment. I, I don't think I have ever done anything 2,000 times. You are to be commended. Well, at the rate at the rate that you and Kid are going, I think you're going to get there. <laughs> but uh, I don't it's, know. Always been, it's always been great I, interviewing you, and you you're in two of my every little thing shows. So, so uh, you have, know, it's, I've always loved it, and I, um, you know, I always was I was scared to death, and I mean to death the very first time I came on your show. I can run three miles and not perspire as much as I was, but you are so gracious and you're such an informed interviewer that I always feel like I'm safe and that, you know, I can just relax. So thank you for all the times you've had me on. As opposed to what you feel on our show, which is like angst and... <laughs> <laughs> she's, saying, she's saying, get me off here, get me off here. <laughs> That is not true. You guys are wonderful. You are uh, wonderful. And you know, some well, you're a sweetheart. I didn't give you much notice. Thank you for coming on. Ask Ken some questions. Uh, Say what? Do I? You're such a sweetheart for coming on with such little notice. You jumped right on with enthusiasm. Are there any questions you'd like to ask Ken about his many broadcasts? I know he's had Ringo as an interview, which is very, very impressive. That one gets me. Do you have anything you'd like to ask him about his vast number of informative and entertaining shows? It's hard to be informative and entertaining at the same time. People usually well, aren't yeah. entertained when you're giving them knowledge. They just want to be, you know, they want you to dance. Ken, who would you say was your most emotional? Like, you, you know, like for me, it would probably be like either Ivor Davis or Art Schreiber, you know, just thinking that they were there and they were all part of it. Have you ever had someone that you got off and you were like a little bit, you know, not teary eyed. I know guys don't get teary eyed, but have you ever felt like really overcome with emotion from someone that was on the show? Well, yeah. I mean, apart from Ringo, I mean, that's in a class all by itself, but um, certainly the people who were there in the sixties and even mm -hmm. before that, I would say definitely, like Billy J. Kramer that I've known for quite a long time because he shares so much history with the Beatles, yeah. you know, and all the songs that John and Paul wrote for him. And he also has the George Martin and Brian Epstein connection. And right. um, also Peter Asher, I've interviewed many times now, even with Gordon. And that was a yeah. real treat. Uh, but also just because he's probably the, I like to say one of the nicest guys I've ever met, period, is Carl Perkins. Carl Perkins was a sweetheart. He had that, well, you know all about this, dude, Southern hospitality. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he does, he, uh, he would make you feel like gold, you know, yeah. being in his presence. And um, he just treated me with so much respect. And, uh, you know, he, he would talk about um, the song My Old Friend with me and how emotional it was when he played that song in front of Paul, working with Paul on the Tug of War album. Um, you know, and he himself was such a huge fan of the Beatles. Um, I've said on a few of my shows that I had the chance to, at an oldie show, go into the parking lot with Carl and go into his uh, van. And he pulled out a folder that said uh, the Carl Perkins fan club and all four Beatles signatures were on them. Oh, what? And, and he carried that around with him. Did wow. you spike it? <laughs> I touched it. I touched it. Oh, but, wow. Uh, oh, yeah. oh, wow. He, uh, I never I, got to talk to him, but I got to talk to Stan. And so did Kit, because Stan was at Beatles at the Ridge, what, Kit, yes. our second year? Hmm. And um, he, too, was so, so lovely, such a nice person. Um, you know, I get that is gigantic that that is gigantic i wow it's one thing to have a great interview but when the person is extra special nice you know yeah. it just stands out among you know the many people that i've interviewed and i've been blessed believe me with a lot of different people that i've interviewed you know i could spend an hour talking about it but you know if i have to narrow it down those are a few many members Did of you wins you know oh yeah yeah did you ever interview uh, Dennis Ferrante? 
Oh, sure I did. I knew him pretty well. He was a very, very outspoken guy. Um, I had him when I did my show in New Jersey on WDHA for 10 years. He was actually on for my last show, um, Dennis with May Pang together. And, um, you know, he would just talk about how great it was working with John. And, um, yeah, he was a sweetheart. Loved him. One of my yeah. very, very favorite people ever. Well, at one time, Lena and I were doing a show, and we were talking about May Payne, and, you know, this about May, and that about May, and all of a sudden, there was a caller on the line, and we never, ever got any callers, and we answered it, and the voice says, hello, this is May Payne, and I heard you talking about me. I thought I just had to call in and straighten some things. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> oh, she was, she was super nice, and she was you know, she was agreeing with what we're saying, but she was tweaking it. She, uh, we screamed like little girls. We screamed <laughs> bloody murder. We were so uh, excited. I don't, I don't think I slept for like five nights. You screamed like a <laughs> beetle maniac. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. <laughs> I was so excited. I was so taken. That was like one of the most shocking moments of my life. Who'd ever think they paint would call in? You know, but yeah. uh, well. Ken, we celebrate you, and that is a quite an accomplishment. I, um, I just, you know, with all that goes on in life, just dealing with all the things we have to do now with the coronavirus, I'm spending at least uh, 45 minutes every day cleaning cans and boxes and, and, you know, disinfecting everything that comes in the house. And to have the, to make the time to put the Beatles forward so much that you would do 2,000 shows. I hope that they're all in a in a uh, storehouse so that historians can use them forever and ever and ever and ever because that's quite an accomplishment. Well, I have most of them. I don't have all of them. You know, I certainly didn't know when I started doing this that I would be doing it for almost 40 years. And in the very beginning, well, I used to record my shows on cassette. But they used to tell you when you were studying radio and you're on the air, you want to listen back to your shows to hear hear yourself and try to improve. And I would erase over each show with the same cassette in the very beginning. Mm. But when I was on the air on WDHA for 10 years, most of those shows I recorded. So I have all those. And all the ones that are the podcast, they're all online anyway. So uh, that's that's a good thing. You know, yeah. uh, that's a yeah. great thing. And hopefully it'll stay there forever. Between things we said today and Talk More Talk, they're all out there for anyone to wow. listen to. Yeah. Well, I got to know you via Kit. So my thanks, Kit, to you for introducing me to Ken. And I just have I've enjoyed the time that we have been together. You have always ask the tough questions and make me think. And that is what an interviewer should do you always you have to pause and think and dig deep so very thank true. you very much mm-hmm. well, well, I do. You, you know your series of books your john lennon series of books say what now <laughs> you're familiar <laughs> with your john you know you have a lot of books out about john lennon did you know that <laughs> yeah i know, I know that i, I I'm lost in 1965 right now. In fact, I wrote a check today to the grocery store, and I put 4 June 1965. <laughs> It'd be good if the groceries came at the prices from that year for me. <laughs> but tell us about the latest book. What's the latest one released, and what's the one to come? Oh, uh, the one that just came out. Well, uh, well just it's been two years now. Was should have known better about 1964, everything that happened in 1964, almost day by day. And I'm working right now crazily on Shades of Life, which is 1965. So I just finished the LSD incident, or as George called it, the dental experience. (laughs) (laughs) Where can you? Agent Dr. Robert. <laughs> there you go. Where yeah, can the yeah. listeners go to order your books and find your books? Uh, JohnLennonSeries.com or to a place that is belongs to every single one of us, TheFast.com. Mm, excellent. So I just sent you a text. 
if you could surreptitiously help me enhance this show, there's some secret information in my text that only you okay. can read and possibly okay. help us with. What do you say? You'll read it? Yes, I'll do it the moment I get off the phone. Well, I love your books. They've been great. Everyone I read, and they're so big. I have carpal tunnel syndrome, but it was worth the pain to enjoy the books. They are fantastic. I'm trying to give you something you can do bicep curls with if you want to while you're reading. Nice. You're my Jack Lane. You get me? Just holding the books builds up my muscle strength. There you go. There you go. Well, this one's going to be no different. I'm I'm already up to 350 pages, and we're only in April of 1960. Is that the introduction? <laughs> yeah, that's the introduction. That's the introduction. All right. I've been having a trend on this show. I've been asking one cheesy question to each guest. Is there a chance you could get Bill Harry to come on sometime? <laughs> no, there's no, there's no chance. I'm telling you, I've begged him, and I love Bill with all my heart, but he's not going to do it. I mean, oh, no. If you, if you, I can't, maybe you can you get You mean he went to our show. He must have heard it. I'll write him. I'll write him. <laughs> yeah. I have written before. You know. Yeah. I'd love try. What was the problem? He heard our show before, and he just decided no? <laughs> yeah. I run yeah. too, so... <laughs> There you it's go. Not that. He, he would gladly, he would help you with anything at all that you wanted. He's the most giving, loving person, but he don't want to be on the, on the radio show. So. Oh, no. Uh, yeah. But he'll write introduction. But, so, well, if I ever write a book, I'll call you. <laughs> but I doubt I will. <laughs> <laughs> but you're well, a Ken, Thank you for coming on to celebrate Ken. Thank and you, dude. I don't mean this. Um, you know, just lightly. I mean, this sincerely can shine on. Oh, thank you so much, Jude. It's always thank a joy talking to you, and uh, I'm looking forward to the next book and having you on my show again on every thank little you thing. So much. Kit, see you soon. Absolutely. I'll see. Hopefully, right. this uh, year, but if not, with the fest, you know, if they're not on next year. Okay, that sounds good. Okay, guys, love y'all. See you soon. All Bye -bye. right, see you, dude. See ya. So you read my see text ya. that I just sent you? Uh, it's dude. too late. She's go she gone. <laughs> She's <shall>. gone, Bob. <laughs> so I heard you guys had some trivia questions. All right, and guys, I really, I really have to go because my <laughs> I got to get dinner for my parents. So <laughs> all right, that's they first. are starving. Well, that's you bail it out just before we get in the hard questions. Oh, I know. And, that, and that's it. But but, <laughs> uh, but this has really been fun. And Ken, again, congratulations. This is a, an honor to be part of the, the This Is Your Life party. <laughs> there you Especially go. wait till you have one. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm, I'm waiting for my turn. And, you know, of course, I'll have to wait another, I don't know, 30 years or so. But that's okay. I can, I can wait. <laughs> Uh, congratulations. Hey, this. Oh, this was fun. Yeah, this was yeah. really fun. And Bob Warren, thanks for uh, for asking me to be a part of this. Uh, Patty, great talking to you. Yeah. Uh, and she just hung up. She's oh. writing Fire of a Beatlemaniac Part 2 <laughs> right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> Well, tell her I said goodbye. So, anyway, so thanks, guys. And thank Your you, favorite Kit. Support thank and you, a blessing. Kit. And we love you on Talk More Talk. And we'll be looking for that on Monday. Uh, no, not this Monday. The following uh, June, uh, the whatever, whatever. Fifteenth. June fifteenth. Thank you, Ken. Yep, June fifteenth. June fifteenth on every form of social media available. At what time? <laughs> Nine p.m. Eastern on uh, Facebook Live. If you want to join us live. Great. And that we yeah. do. And thank you for coming on. You, you're one of our most favoriteest guests. And thank you for coming on and being a sport and not running away before when you were going to bail so that you didn't come into the shine and glow of Ken's 2000 show, but you only enhanced the shine and glow. It was oh, all so wonderful. Good. They're overdoing it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this, this was fun. I'm glad I stayed. This was really fun. So You're a sport. Um, what do you get? What are you getting for dinner there? Uh, so we don't know yet, but dad, dad was looking, uh, looking at me longingly uh, about, you know, look, giving me the I'm hungry look uh, out the window there. So I'm like, I better go. <laughs> I like the background there, kid. It almost yep. looks like Fire Park. 
Yeah, I know. Yep, it's in our backyard. <laughs> Do you have any of those dwarfs with Jed Clampett hats? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, kid. All right, love you guys. Uh, love you, you too. too. Love you. All right, bye. And bye. -bye. bye, -bye. So I heard some rumors of trivia. I've got a few here I can throw at you guys. Cool. And it will give you an idea of what I do on every little thing. And also what's on my website. I don't know if I you do. ever look at the trivia that I do every single week. But I always offer prizes. There's nine prizes to pick from. And Ooh. one person wins every single week. So, what, so kind of, what kind of prize are we winning? Uh, well, we'll have to talk about that later. <laughs> <laughs> Great but, deal. Um, if you look at the website, there's books, there's CDs, there's DVDs. Um, there's the brand new um, ebook of Eight Arms to Hold You mm. by Chip Mattinger and Mark Easter. And I just interviewed those two guys, and they're going to be on things we said today as well. It's like the ultimate solo Beatles reference book. And uh, they cover everything studio recordings, live recordings, set lists from all the concerts, mm. um, bootleg stuff. Material that wasn't bootleg, TV appearances, film appearances, lost lead and tapes material, you name it. It's all in that book, and it goes all the way through the year 2000. And they just updated the information of everything through 2000. So um, that's a new prize that I'm giving away as an ebook now. Oh, but that's um, great. yeah. So why don't I give you an example of a game that I have called Think for Yourself? Okay. Okie dokie. So what I'm going to do is read to you the titles of four songs. They're Beatles songs or solo Beatles songs, and they all have something unique in common with each other. It can't be something as simple as John sings lead on all of them. It's got to be something unique, very unique about it. Okay? okay. Gotcha. So the four songs are Number Nine Dream, Tamara Never Knows, The Ballad of John and Yoko, and Run of the Mill. Where's the Jeopardy theme music? I'm going to take a guess and Warren can take his own guess. I'm going to say two. two Beatles played on the Ballad of John and Yoko without the other two. So in some fashion, solo or as a group, is each song featured two Beatles? No. no. Well, I'm wrong, Warren. It's up to you now. Save us. I'm just going to take a simple guess uh, and almost the obvious. John Lennon's uh, uh, wrote the songs. No, because Run of the Mill is a George Harrison song. Okay. Um, and it wouldn't be something that obvious or that simple. Right. Okay. Um, hmm. That's that's a hard question, man. You you're uh, <laughs> you trying to dig into our brains here, and we don't he have any brains. He made leave on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> that's why they got rid of Kit. Uh, um, I'm gonna give up because I have no clue. I'll go. Okay. I'll go with Bob, and you said it was wrong already. <laughs> that's a good guess, and I'm wrong. You're gonna go along with me. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, so you want the answer? Yes, sir, please. For all four of those songs, you won't find the title anywhere in the lyrics. Ooh, that's very tricky. That's very so, good. I like that. You never hear Tomorrow Never Knows in the song Tomorrow Never Knows. Correct. You this never hear Number Nine Dream and, you know, that kind of thing. Right. So, Warren pointed that out to me about Tomorrow Never Knows. This who did? Oh, okay. Warren pointed it about the one song out to me when we had the show going. He said, know, okay. You know, Ken, it's not fair that you're asking these question, questions to two people that don't have brains. <laughs> it's his show. He can do as he likes. It's his 2000 show. You probably know more than you let on. <laughs> nah, not me. I don't do, I don't do things like that. <laughs> let, me, let me give you an easier one, okay? This is a one-liner. This is one I read. Uh, part of the lyrics of a Beatles song or a solo Beatles song, you just have to name the song. Right. Okay. The lyrics read The more I learn, the less I know. The inner light? Uh, you're warm. It's a George song, I think. Okay, you're right on that. Warren? <laughs> mm. um, 
all things must pass. Love you too. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know it's not. Is it on Revolver? Nope. It's oh. not a. It's not a Beatles song, correct? It is a Beatles song. It's it a is George Beatles song. Wow. Actually, Within man. you, without you. Nope. Mm. You got any <laughs> left? I, mean, I think we went through <laughs> everything, but don't bother me. It's not that, is it? No. It's a later one. Mm. Don't, Warren, you have Google. <laughs> uh, don't Google. <laughs> I, I have Google, but I don't have any of that up right now. <laughs> um. Man, drive on the island, the less I know. Is that how it goes? Within you, uh, with that? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe slightly. Get kid back here. You got dinner. You're back in the show. All right, Ken, go ahead. I'll call back. Up. Okay. It's all too much. It's all oh, too much. The, the less I know. And there you I go. like it. And keep on singing. Good question. <laughs> These are challenging, as Maurice Chevalier would say. Good question. <laughs> All are right. We, I... Are are we good at playing dumb? <laughs> <laughs> like Columbo, I, Peter Falk. I think this is all an act. I think you know the answers. <laughs> <Peter Falk. laughs> no, I didn't know those two. I didn't know those two at all. And, right. and these uh, trivia questions, they can be found on your website? That's right. There's a Beatles trivia and games page at KenMichaelsRadio.com. Every week, there's a new uh, trivia question or game that gets posted, usually late Monday night. Um, and then it lasts for a whole week. So you have through Sunday to email me with the answer. No, these are good questions. This is hot stuff. Yes, it is. So let me give you one that I think you'll get. All right. What two Don't jinx us. <laughs> what two triple albums from the solo Beatles hit number one in the United States on the Billboard album charts in the 70s? All things must pass. And was Wings Over America a triple album? Yes, it was. There you I go. And, and they, Ringo's they, album. Ringo? Ringo didn't have a triple album. Oh. <laughs> you know, you know that secret triple album that he has. <laughs> Ringo never had a double album. <laughs> uh, there sorry. You go. <laughs> sorry for that stupid. <laughs> I enjoyed it. Keep it up. It's amusing. <laughs> go ahead, Ken. Okay. Name four songs by the Beatles as a group with a foreign language completely or partially in the song lyrics. Michelle, Michelle my best. Come give me a Dinah Han. Good. And one, we need one more. Uh, mm. Isabella uh, Duncan played the Telefunken. <laughs> a legitimate police. And, and you, actually, there's there's no, that's not a foreign language. <laughs> uh, in, English. English is, a, English is a foreign language to me, Ken. So, you know, I so, would say all of them. <laughs> Sun the King. Most, there you I'm, I'm counting that because, yes. Come give me a hand. See, leave Dick and Michelle. There you go. There you go. See, you got it. Yay. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. I, I but find I, also, I also included oh, no. Besame Mucho. Ah, that was a good one. That's a hard one. It harkens back to the early days. I like it. Okay. Right. And let it be, period. Yes, yes. Okay. Um, let me see here. No, you're not going to get this one. <laughs> Ask it anyway. Ask it anyway. All right. What song title is shared by the Beatles, the Kinks, and the Who? It's not a cover song they all played. It's just a title. The three different songs. Three separate songs. Completely different songs that have the same title. Hmm. You're right. I'm not going to get this one. Warren, put on your beetle wig and see if it gives you any brainwaves. <laughs> I'm doing that. And I do recall some. Um, some? 
There's only one. Well, one, yeah. <laughs> you might get fooled again. I, you know, no, I, I don't I, think so. <laughs> I had this uh, trivia question once before. And, uh, and it's only Beatles songs, it's not solo songs. Right, right. Okay. Right. Um, I know this answer. Mm. Do, 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 do. I don't know. I got Michelle stuck in my head now that uh, <laughs> you asked that. This is a good question, though. I never heard this one. I, I, yes, yeah. it is. I'm going to think it's... of the Kinks hits. Is it a hit by the Kinks or just a no. regular? They're, they're album out? tracks. They're okay. all album tracks from all three bands. Okay. Mm. You know, without spending too much time thinking here, I'm going to go ahead and give up. Uh, I'm going to take a just pick a Beatles okay. song at random because you stick a pin in the map and just see if you get lucky. I want to hold your hand. There you go. No. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. At least you guessed. At least you guessed. <laughs> All right, Ken, give up, man. I need you. Ah, okay. They all three recorded a different song called I Need You. Okay. Mm. okay. Now if uh, I go on Jeopardy and uh, I get you know, lost, they ask me this question, <laughs> I'll know it, and then I'll go home with uh, a bicycle or something that I went <laughs> Whatever you, you know, get, you're sharing with me, Bob. Uh, yeah. I heard a bicycle that, going for two. It will be cool. I heard that trivia question before, and I should have known the answer, but even with you giving me the answer, it's still I still don't recall that. Mm. A good well, hard one, Ken. It that was might a good have been question. me. These are good. Yeah, it might have been me because I've used that in the past. So I'll give you a couple of true and false statements. And each one, you got to tell me whether it's true or false. All right. I like it. It's 50% chance of getting it right. So we'll each take a guess. One of us will look foolish. The other will get it right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let me read both first, and then you'll each have a shot. Okay. The first one John Lennon played bass on Helter Skelter. Is that true or false? Don't say anything. Uh, the second one, the Beatles had more top 10 hits as solo artists in the United States on the Billboard charts than they did as a band. True or false? Okay. So who I'm wants gonna, to go first? I'm going to say true one, number one, false on number two. Okay, Bob? I think George played bass on Helter Skelter, so I'm going to go with that. And the second one, was it just songs or was it albums? Singles. One. Singles. Songs, yeah. Um, I think they had 19 number ones or 20. These are top reading. 10. Top 10. Well, top 10, not just number one. Yeah. Wow. So I'm saying the Beatles had more top 10 hits as solo artists on the Billboard charts in America than they did as a band. Is that true or false? Top 10. I'm, I'm going to go with the solo artists having more simply because it's such a much larger span of time. Okay. Well, you're both wrong. <laughs> <laughs> wow, like I didn't know that. <laughs> but that speaks to the power of the Beatles that in that time period until 1970 that they would have more in that, you know, grouping than in the next, you know, McCartney's still recording, Ringo's still recording. That's pretty no, amazing. I'm saying that both of you, if you had to combine your answers, both of you are wrong. But the second one is true. The Beatles had more top 10 singles as solo artists than they did as a band in the United States, according to Billboard. They had 43 top 10 hits as solo mm. artists. They had 34 as a band. Mm. And that also includes, when you're talking about the band, that's, in, that's including when Got to Get You Into My Life went top 10 in 1976. It also includes when Free as a Bird was a top 10 single mm. in 1995. So it can include the later releases. It's not right. strictly up to 1970. Right. So, yeah. And the first one, John Lennon played bass on Helter Skelter. That is true. Warren got it right. Okay. Yeah, and I, I also got the second one right, but I misunderstood it. So I meant to say. That doesn't count. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we get a half a ding, ding, ding. <laughs> so we, we need a break. I call it time out. I call it time out because we need to regroup. I need to go to the sidelines and talk to the coach because I've been getting stacked. The linemen aren't protecting me. I Warren, look at your phone. Look at your phone, Warren. 
He's pulling up Google. That's all there, uh, Ken. No, I never Google. If I Google, I always confess. I have Googled on shows where we did questions, but I confessed immediately. Okay. Warren, look at your phone. I, I'm looking at my phone, Bob. I don't see nothing. And I'm going to keep the guests on to help us with these questions. <laughs> well, I'm running out of questions, but I can always come up with some off the top of my head. We need a lifeline. <laughs> I'm calling you one now. I'm calling my lifeline. I'm like, read re- re- all Hello. Right. Hello, mystery guest. Don't tell us who you are yet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you for playing along. We're going to play a few questions to try to guess who you are. Is that fair? I love it. Okay. Are you a Beatles author? Yes, I am. Have you also written another wonderful children's book whose main character was a doggy? Mm. Yes. I know. Yes, it. I have. You have. It's not your turn yet, Warren. I'm still asking the question. <laughs> <laughs> have you had a podcast with a major John Lennon biographer? Yes, I have. You have. Let me. Okay, I'll pass it over now to Warren Brown. He might have a question <laughs> and then a guess. <laughs> um, let's see here. Um. Did we talk to you recently on our show? You certainly did. Wow. Is your first name start with the L? Bingo. <laughs> wow. Um, all right. I'm going to hand it over to Ken. See if he's got the guess. It's got to be Lanny Stack. Ding, 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 ding. We have a winner. Right. Winner, winner. Chicken dinner. It's about time I want something. I'm always Lena, getting you know I'm what it is? We're celebrating, I think you know what it is, the 2000th broadcast of Ken Michaels. And you know what? He's been playing. He's famous for the trivia. And I've been the quarterback, and he's just been, like, sacking me like Lawrence Taylor in his heyday. So I called for a lifeline. So we called you on now so to help me save my brave face. So will you stay on and help us with the <laughs> trivia questions so I don't look too oh. ignorant? <laughs> yes. we, we desperately need a lifeline. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I think you dialed the wrong number, but oh, I, I will give so. it I my you know your stuff. I will I will give it my Beatles best. All right. All Do you right. want to Give before we do the questions. Do you want to give a congratulations over to for the two thousandth broadcast, which is pretty impressive. Absolutely, absolutely. As you guys said, I'm Lena Stagg from the Recipe Records Cookbook series, and I did want to let Ken know I've been cooking up a very delicious congratulations on his two thousandth two thousandth. <laughs> <laughs> podcast. That's a, a terrific milestone, and I'm very excited and very proud to be one of the congratulatory staff. Well, thank you, Lania. That means that means a lot to me. <laughs> and he it's has terrific. been on podcasts. He's been on the he's been on the high ground of the regular radio, not only podcasts like us. Absolutely. I think I think Ken, you were on my. Uh, yeah, blog talk radio show eons ago, probably like eight years ago. And uh, I remember it very well, and I loved having you on. Well, have me on again. Uh, <laughs> I got plenty you're of on the... time right now. <laughs> <laughs> <Don't>, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, we <you> do. <laughs> well, you guys that would be do terrific. a show. Go ahead, I'm taping. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, sorry, Bob. All, all yours, Bob. Well, I just you mentioned your books. Could you tell us about some of them before we continue with trivia? Could you tell us where it's about some of your books and where they can be found? Oh, absolutely. Well, as I said, I am the author of the Recipe Records Cookbook series. They are a cookbook that combines food and music, and they're very hip to use in your kitchen. They pay tribute to um, my first cookbook pays tribute to all kinds of rock and country and blues music. And then I have a 60s edition, and it pays tribute to the food and music of the 60s. And the most popular is 
the recipe records a culinary tribute to the Beatles, and it is 50 recipes to celebrate 50 years of the Beatles. It came out several years ago, and it is full of wonderful recipes, great food, and lots of stories and trivia about the Fab Four. I also have two children's books, Little Dog About Town and Little Dog in the Sun. So they are, they're quite fun as well. And those can be found at my website, which is lanastag.com, or they're at Amazon as well. And are you also the editor for that certain special beetle, John? Let me say that again, and I'll untie my tongue. Are you also the editor of the wonderful Jude Kessler series of John Lennon books? Yes, I am. I am very honored to be Jude Kessler's editor and it is um it's it's really a fantasy world to to slip into when i read her her john lennon um tale it it's it's really very touching and it's a great insight into john's life so i'm 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 really honored to be to to help J jude with that and before you help us save our brave faces again, did you have a special event in your family recently? Was there anything you'd like to tell us about that a big special thing happened in your family? Well, we had a wedding last weekend, which wow. was a, nice. it was a major event because uh, Indianapolis is still in lockdown and it was in Indianapolis, Indiana. And uh, so it was very tricky to, make that wedding happen but it was a miracle <laughs> and um there was divine intervention and the wedding was lovely and we had a had a terrific time every weekend around my house is an event there is some sort of an event happening we have a blended family and so we have a total of eight children and uh five grandchildren so mm -hmm. we are always uh, there is always something happening, and it's 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 a lot of fun. It we have a really a really great family, and everyone is very different, and we get to experience a lot of different things with with wow. our kids. Wow. Well, you're a cook, right? And you're an excellent cook, and we're giving thanks because you've been so blessed this week with the wedding. But when you guys get together for giving thanks on Thanksgiving, how, how many pounds is a turkey with that number of people? Is it the size of like a terrace, like, you know, a terrace or something? I tell you what, you, you just can't imagine how much food I have to have to make when we have big family gatherings because we have no less, you know, a minimum of 30 people when we have uh, family dinners. So it's always, uh, there's always a lot of people and, and I love feeding people. And uh, so it's, it's a lot of fun. And the, the, um, the recipes that I cook for all of our events are right out of the cookbooks and they're easy and they're quick, but they're delicious and they look elegant. And uh, that's a lot of, a lot of the fun right now, uh, especially right now during the pandemic, they, the cookbooks come in handy. A lot of people have told me they come in handy because they're very, um, um, they're very not simple, but they're they're simple recipes. They're not elaborate. You don't have to buy a lot of different ingredients. It's a lot of ingredients you have at home anyway. But um, the delicious part is for those of us that have. Alexa or any other uh, music service, you can make a playlist to go with the recipes you're making, which you can find in the cookbooks. And it's always a lot of fun to um, just to enjoy the music while you're while you're cooking. A lot of people don't like to cook, but the music kind of takes off the edge. Mm -hmm. But you know that old show, Battle of the Network Stars, where like Gabe Kaplan would get together with Fat Albert and they'd have like a race. Ken is beating us here, like, you know, it's like 21 to 7, and, like, we're down, and, like, so we're calling on you to join us and help us save face here. What do you say? You're going to help us? <laughs> okay. Ken, like, he's got some serious Beatle questions. He asked me, 
what was Ringo's social security number backwards? <laughs> so I was like, I'm having trouble. I need help here. So can you help us out? <laughs> wow. Uh, give it your best shot, at least. I'm guessing he did not have a social security number because he was a British. Uh, that wasn't a real good, question. I was just making it up as an good example. Answer, but, good answer, though. But that was a very intelligent answer, so stay on the phone and help us. <laughs> so we'll go back to trivia now, back to Mr. 2000 Excellent Chosen. I met Ringo, and he's going to ask me some more questions. <laughs> well, Ladia, I just wanted to say it sounds like you should start your own catering business. Well... Uh, Hey, I don't know if I have that kind of energy, but. <laughs> well, you love cooking, so. Yeah. Anyway, if, if you got that many kids, I guarantee you, you got more energy than I do. <laughs> well, I, I probably have more energy because of that. <laughs> so. <laughs> right. And Warren has more energy than me, so I'm not even going to compete. But let's get some more questions in here. Okay. I'm going to play that game, Think for Yourself, again. And in this game, I'm going to read the titles of four songs, Beatles or Solo, and they have something unique in common with each other, and you have to figure out what that is. And like I was telling the guys, um, it can't be something simple, like John sings lead on all the songs or Paul sings lead on all the songs. It's got to be something real unique about the four of them. Um, the four songs are Jealous Guy, that day is done. Revolution, the fast version, and the light that has lighted the world. Could you say the titles again? Jealous Guy, That Day is Done, Revolution, the fast version, and the light that has lighted the world. Hmm. Good, good question, man. Lifeline. <laughs> Help! <laughs> well, in my mm. life. Mm. Wow. wow. Were they songs that were started when they were Beatles and completed as solo artists? No, you're thinking about that with Jealous Guy, I know, but yeah. no. Good try, good try Bob. Mm. Um, shoot. I have, I'm thinking it has to do with John Lennon. Um. Mm. Wow. Yeah, that's that's a, that's a hard one there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll try to make them more more easier as I go. Okay. <laughs> Don't tell us you're making them more easier. But you even you so even self confidence comes back. You even, <laughs> you even stumped our lifeline. So uh, <laughs> that's not hard. Being rude, Ken. <laughs> Maybe I'm amazed. Um, <laughs> Laddie, you got a, any ideas? Wow, I, I, I just can't. It's hard to think when you put I, on the spot. Yep. <laughs> with, uh, That's why you should play the do. trivia on my website because you have all week to answer. <laughs> oh, good idea. Did somebody um, cry in each song? What's that? Did someone cry tears in each song? No. <laughs> Just taking a shot. He, he it's cried possible, in, but that's not it. In that day is done. Um, um, All right. I think our time limit is like. All right. So you want the answer? <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. All four songs have Nicky Hopkins playing on, on them. Uh, one of the I great session would. players of rock and roll. Wow. And he does the piano solo on Revolution. Mm -hmm. Wow. Know, in the middle there. So hmm. let me let me give you all right. Just make Name. him easier. Don't tell us you're making him easier. Just have mercy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Name uh the two Lennon McCartney songs in the Beatles catalog that George sang lead to. I'm happy just to dance with you. Good. Lena, two wrote do you want uh, to know the secret? It's Lennon McCartney. So that's two? That's it. 
That's what I was what looking was, for. All right. What ding, was the ding, second ding, one? Do you want to know a secret? Ah, uh, that's what I was. I was trying to think of the title of that one. That <laughs> <laughs> was close. Good deal. <laughs> Good deal, Ken. Very hard questions here. Makes your uh, trivia page uh, interesting to go to. That's why they get prizes for these, because these are tough. He's good. Yes, yes, he is. They are not for the week. (laughs) Proceed, Ken. Uh, Just got a few more here. Okay. Um, What was the last solo Beatles album in the United States to give us three top ten singles on the Billboard charts? Solo album, three top tens from the same album. Band on the Run. Nope. He said that, that was like 73, so that'd be a little bit early, right? That's early, 73. Okay. Mm. It's three uh, top ten was it George? in one album. Was it George? Um, you know, the, the one with All the guy that set on you? Cloud oh, Nine, you're guessing? No. Nope. No? no Cloud Nine. Okay. I, I, how about Ringo? Ringo. Excellent guess. Three, three top tens from that one. Yeah, but it's the not photograph. That's not the one. Yep, photograph. You're sixteen and oh my my. Mm. Uh, but there was one other album after that that had three top tens. I still the, get a guess, right? Was it, a, was it a Paul McCartney album? Actually, no. Double Fantasy. There you go. There you go. Mm. Okay, Bob. <laughs> Good guess, Yay. Bob. Yay. Yay. <laughs> so you had, so, just like starting over, you had Woman and you had Watching mm-hmm. the Wheels. That's right. Nice. Yeah, good album, too. Mm-hmm. That's terrific. Mm-hmm. If you like to skip over every other track, just kidding. No, <laughs> oh, stop it. Stop it. Hey, <laughs> Joe, I, 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 I kid. <laughs> what, what, what do you have against John songs, Bob? Uh, uh, I don't know uh, what it is. He uh, doesn't uh, have the uh, melody, uh, right, melody of Paul McCartney, in my opinion. Uh, uh, I kid, I kid. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to go there, Bob. <laughs> don't belabor it so I get in trouble. No, <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, Ken, you got more? Um, let's just try this one. I uh, I have a few if you don't, and mine are are really simple compared to yours. <laughs> okay. I'll go with Warren's question. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead. I'll take Ken. Warren for five hundred. <laughs> well, what do you got? Finish up with yours, and then we'll All go. All right. Ahead. Um, just give me four titles of songs, Beatles or solo, that have the word either. Yesterday, today, or tomorrow in the song titles. Give yesterday. me four titles. <laughs> there you go. Tomorrow <laughs> never knows. Yesterday. Yeah. Right. And what were the other words? It's yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Here, there, and everywhere. <laughs> Where's where is there yesterday and today and tomorrow? I, I don't know. It was here, there, and everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> The trick is going to be the solo songs in there, too. So you threw me for a loop. I'm all confused now. So it was yesterday, tomorrow, and help me out. I'm getting out of minded Yesterday, tomorrow. Or today. Or today. Things We Said Today, which is also the name of a popular show that the kids love so much. <laughs> tomorrow Never Knows, <laughs> Yesterday. And come on, Lena, Lena, you're like a beetle cook, and you know all the stuff. Get us one. Help me, help me. Hey, hey, I got yesterday. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, you did. Don't don't discount that high-level functioning there. (laughs) I concur. I concur. Mm. um, Give it up? No, we need one more. Come on, guys, rally. Okay. Okay. Is this uh, coming from solo albums also? Yes. Did you say? Yeah. Um, Is there any Ringo's? No. Mm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ooh, Paul McCartney. Wait, tomorrow yeah. never knows. Things we said today, yesterday. Yeah. 
Come on, guys, help me out here. It's the bottom of the ninth. We have two strikes. Three well, balls I, in the face of the I, down by a run. I already struck out a long time ago, Bob. All right, Ken. All right, what's another one? Okay. Uh, there's Tomorrow, the song Tomorrow, which is on Wildlife. Really great song. Should have been a single, actually. There's Here Today. That's oh, that was the one we should have gotten. That was the one we should have gotten. Uh, and an album that Lanny had just mentioned, Cloud Nine, Just for Today. Oh, those uh, two uh, we should have had a shot uh, at. Good right. question. Uh, now, good I just question. scribbled these down. There may be more than that, but those are the ones I just thought of quickly. Right. Good, one. good deal. Good All trivia. Right. Good trivia, and uh, Ken, tell us where they can find your trivia one more time. On my website, which is KenMichaelsRadio.com, there mm -hmm. is a link there for Beatles trivia and games. Awesome. And every single week, there's trivia there. Starts Monday night, runs through Sunday. You have a whole week there to answer the trivia question or the game. Okay. Uh, I'm going to ask. And you give, away, you give away prizes, Ken? I sure do. Okay, if you need any prizes, then uh, Recipe Records would be delighted to pitch in and offer gifts. Okay, let's, there, there let's message go. each other after this. Okay. <laughs> All right. You Will got do. It. Awesome. All right. Awesome. And, and Ken, I also, I, I'm a graphic artist, as you know. And if there's anything I can chip in, just give me a, give me a holler and let me know. I'm getting my whole team here. Yeah, this is one stop shopping. <laughs> you should make him a beautiful graphic piece for for his two thousandth broadcast. 